Across Africa, the combination of science and technology could be the formula for accelerating development. Ndoni Kanyile is in Ghana to meet an innovator who believes that coding is set to become one of Africa's most important languages. This is a place where we build robots. Ben Naughty, otherwise known as the Bot Master, is a robot builder, entrepreneur, and teacher. You know, robots is actually everything. It includes games, apps, everything. He's the founder and CEO of the Metro Institute of Innovation and Technology in Ghana. Ben. Hi, Donnie. How are you? I'm very well. Can you show me where the students are? Yeah, they're in the lab currently. So generally, the students come here during school holidays and over weekends. Absolutely. Right. It shows a lot of dedication on their part. Yes, because uh, usually during the weekday, you know, they're busy with uh, their school work. So weekends, holidays is the best time for them to uh, come and learn some new skill. So these are your students? Yeah, these are my students, some of them. Morning, everyone. Ben leads an extracurricular coding course for children of all ages in order to spread his passion for robotics. We want to build a new generation of people. The kids in this uh, particular generation, I think we, we just don't have to underestimate them. I mean, they are so powerful, they are smarter than their parents, they are smarter than their teachers. I mean, that's the fact. They, they are born into technology. So this is uh, Kesta. He also loves uh, robotics. He is just about 14 years and uh, getting ready to go to high school. Currently, I think he's building a robot to solve a major problem, a robot to really guide the blind. Explain what you're doing here. I can see that there's some kind of relationship between what you're doing on the screen and this. Yeah, I'm, I'm programming um, the robot so that when it sees an obstacle, it stops and it makes a turn. When blind people are working, they can't see, so they'll need people to guide them about. And what kind of other robots would you like to, to build in future? Robots that can help when there's a fire outbreak somewhere and people need to be saved. Robots can be sent into the fire because the robots do not get hit or anything. So they, they can go and save the people in the fire and bring them out safely. So you're really interested in helping people? It's a move away from the traditional style of educating with a teacher standing in front of the classroom and children sitting in a desk and receiving information. Why do you think this works so well with how children think? When it comes to robotics, one thing you know, if you're going to excel in that field is you've got to have that, you know, fantasy to imagine things that doesn't exist and try to, you know, make it happen. The gentleman, he loves games a lot. I so can see. As you can see, he actually <laughs> writes his own games. Yes. What kind of games do you like? Oh, I like anything that's, you know, educative. Action adventure and especially sci sci fi. Sci fi? Yeah. I like the way it can go things. It's actually actual science, but they, you know, they, give you a, they make you go further, right? When we're teaching the kids, we just don't want them to learn in empty vacuum. We want them to see real life. We want them to appreciate mathematics. When you have a big problem, you have to break it down into smaller chunks mm -hmm. and you start little by little and you build it. There. So that's what we teach the kids. Math really works, and once we take that approach, you know, I believe that kids will really have that inventive um, you know, mindset. And do you find that the, the programs, what they're learning here, the, the games that they're building, the programs that they're, they're writing, do you find that that inevitably has a knock-on effect to their schoolwork, that their definitely, marks improve? Definitely, definitely, because you know, when you are designing game, for example, you need to understand physics the concept, principles of motion, dynamics, kinematics. We are trying to use uh, robotics as a tool to inspire the study of science and, and math, to relate classroom theories okay, using robots, so that if we are talking about a scientific principle, Newton's first law of motion, students would just not memorize the facts. We can actually use robots and we can demonstrate it for them to really see that look. And the law really works. Most of the robots in Ben's lab are made from scrap. When he's not teaching, Ben and his team scour the Accra e-waste dumps for useful material.
He believes that students should not be spending money on parts. Creating robots from e-waste is one of the skills he promotes. This is uh, actually an old cassette player uh, that has been discarded, but you know, in it there are a lot of components that we can use. It's our gear systems that we can use for our mechanical construction. And uh, here are other components that we can use for some of our designs, maybe the head of the robots. You know, we can actually use something like this. Yeah. What are you guys busy with? Uh, well, we're actually configuring one of our robots. Mm, uh, Oko. Yes, this is Oko. Oko is actually a spy. It does uh, surveillance for us. So okay. uh, sometimes we really want to see whether people are working on their planes. So we just <laughs> yeah, drive it around to do all the inspection for okay. us. So the eye has a hidden camera. Mm. You know, So you might not really um, be aware that it's watching you, but um, it's watching it. You see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Oko sees everything. Yeah. Um, the camera is also intelligent enough to, to actually see you, like recognize uh, faces. So what happens is once it sees a face, it can actually, I mean, know you by your name. Oko is fantastic. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, as you can see, these, these, were, these are some of the projects made by, by, by our kids. Really? Yeah. Ben pays regular visits to schools across the country to drum up interest in coding and robotics. So you just tell me, from point D, how do I get to point B? It turns the left wheel. Uh -huh. I mean, we have 2,500 students you know, across the country. You know, once you, we, we expose them to the field, you know, they always get a, a better idea of how to go about things. So irrespective of what you want to do, if your kid wants to be a politician and you know, he gets engaged in, in robotics, he sees technology work this way. You know, later on, it will influence the kind of policy he, he makes. That we have to be able to, you know, equip this with enough intelligence, okay? So that it, it just doesn't move anyhow. Most of the time, they learn and they forget. But with this, you know, they want to achieve a result. And it's fulfilling, it's rewarding. They want the reward, they're happy. Ah, okay, so she did it. Let's talk to her. I believe strongly that it's time we really redefine uh, education because in Ghana, I know that we have been running and depending on an old system, you know, from the British uh, education that they, they put in place for us. We really need a radical change. You know, we should be able to identify people's interests, passion early, and then put them at the right place, give them the right stuff, and I think that they, 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 they're gonna excel. So this is the kind of future we want all of you to be uh, part of. And I believe that now in this century, like every kid must code, every kid must code. Just as you, you learn uh, basic math, algebra, you should, you should know how to code. If people can now see problem, okay, and then attempt to solve that problem. I, I think we, we will go a long way as, as a nation. It makes me think that like, makes me feel like good things are ahead, you know? Mm. The, the world is moving and the world is not waiting for anybody. <laughs>